in Money Watch, lawmakers made a number of changes to the tax code this year to help millions of American families and businesses struggling during the pandemic. But as CBS News Money Watch reporter Amy Peakey reports, taxpayers should be aware that some of those tax breaks will not return next year. Many American families could be eligible to claim additional money in early 2022, but only if they act now. Amy joins us now to discuss. Amy, great to see you as always. Which tax breaks aren't coming back in 2022? And what should people do now to maximize them? Yeah, there are a few tax breaks that aren't coming back. The main one that will really impact a lot of people is the child tax credit. Um, that was cr extremely popular and helped millions of families um, in the last six months where they got checks every month. Um, and that was on the uh, in the Build Back Better Act. It could have been renewed for one more year, and it wasn't. So as far as we know, at this point, the child tax credit is, um, the expanded child tax credit is done. And so, you know, people who are thinking about, okay, well, how can I maximize what I get from the child tax credit, um, might want to think about um, ways to lower their um, taxable income in the current tax year um, so that they can actually qualify for more benefits from the expanded tax uh, child tax credit. The thing to understand with the child tax credit is that it's based on your income. So if you're a, someone who makes above a certain amount, um, it's a, about $160,000 for a married couple. If you're at that threshold, um, you can actually qualify for more income by lowering your uh, taxable income in the current tax year, because this tax credit is based on your 2021 income. So the way you could do that, tax experts say, is by putting more money into your retirement accounts. If you put money into a 401k um, before the end of the year, of course, there's only one more calendar day left to do that, um, you can lower your taxable income. Another way is to put some money aside in an IRA, and you have a little more time to do that. You have until um, the tax deadline of about April 15th, 2022, to put money into an IRA. So there's a couple things to think about. Those, of course, are for people who are kind of at that threshold, that income threshold, where you either got less of a tax benefit or didn't qualify for the tax benefit of the child tax credit because of your income. And the same goes for the stimulus check, the third stimulus check. It's also based on your income, your 2021 income. So if you're kind of at that threshold um, where you didn't quite qualify, you can lower your taxable income and actually get a little bit more money when you file your taxes in 2022. You definitely need to move quickly, as you said. Charitable giving is seen as a tried and true way to get a tax deduction. Is there anything new in 2021? Yeah, and this is something I think a lot of people don't know about. Um, it's kind of interesting. If you take a step back, um, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that went into, or was signed in 2017 by former President Trump, doubled the standard deduction for, for t most taxpayers. And because of that, it made it harder to itemize your taxes. And charities and nonprofits were very concerned because um, they thought that, you know, if people don't get that deduction on their taxes, they would be less likely to contribute um, to a charity before the end of the year. So lawmakers put in this extra benefit um, of $300 for single taxpayers and $600 for married couples that's above and beyond your standard deduction. So, you know, the IRS actually, interestingly, is coming out and telling people, you know, recommending people, please take advantage of this. This is a tax benefit that um, you can use beyond your standard deduction, and it expires this year. At this point, it hasn't been renewed. So if you're thinking in the last day of the calendar year, um, hey, you know, maybe I want to give some money to charity, but it won't really help me on my taxes. Actually, it will. Um, $300 for a single person uh, and $600 for a married um, couple who's filing jointly. So something to think about when you're looking at the um, your finances at the end of the year. Uh, but again, that has to be done before the end of the day on December, December 31st. And definitely a, a welcome gift for those organizations. Now, the stock market has hit record highs this year. Are there any tax strategies that people can use to help with capital gains taxes? Yeah, so something that um, tax professionals recommend is, you know, if you've had a tax gain, a lot of people have had um, big tax gains this year, and you sold uh, that stock or that investment, you booked a gain, you're going to owe taxes on that to Uncle Sam. 
Um, one strategy you can use is called tax loss harvesting, where basically you find something that you've lost money on in your portfolio, you sell it, you book the loss, and then you can offset that loss with the capital gains in um, the other stock or investment that you sold. And that will help lower or even completely eliminate, depending on uh, how much of a loss you have, the capital gains tax that you that you incurred. There are a couple of things that you need to know about this. One is that um, that loss has to be taken before the end of the, the calendar year. So you only have one more day to do that. So if you're thinking about using the strategy, you have to sell that stock you had a loss on by the end of tomorrow, December 31st. Um, you know, the other thing, too, is that this is only for taxable accounts. So if you have like a investment account, a Fidelity or Robinhood, um, you know, use it, use it in that kind of portfolio. It doesn't work for retirement accounts that are um, the taxes are deferred in, in that case. So that wouldn't work. So this is more for private investments in, in your portfolio. But it's something to think about, especially if you, you know, invest in some of those meme stocks and have a gain and thinking about, oh, you know, I'd like to lower my tax bill. Uh, how do I do that? That's one strategy. Are there any other strategies to be aware of, Amy? Yeah. So, you know, there's another thing uh, tax professionals um, are recommending. For, this is for more for wealthy people that you can give up to $15,000 per person um, as a gift and not pay taxes on it. So, you know, if you're someone like a grandparent that wants to give a gift to a grandchild or another relative, you can do that tax-free in the calendar year. But this is a use it or lose it kind of tax break. So if you don't do it by the end of December 31st, then that goes away. However, it resets in the next calendar year, 2022. And at that point, it actually will go up to um, $16,000 per person. So, you know, that's another strategy to think about. But um, that's, again, more for like higher, you know, wealthier and people who have that money to give away. Well, you gave us uh, plenty of tips, a lot to think about, but not a lot of time to think about it. Amy Peaky, thank you so much. Thank you so much.